Hey everyone, and welcome to Unit 2 of Senior Hayes Spanish Course. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, so how did Unit 1 go for you guys? Uh, you know, I hope that it went well. We covered a lot of basic material, so, so um, you know, if, you, if there's anything you forget, you can always go back and rewatch those videos. Uh, today is Lexion 6, so we're going to talk about uh, stressed syllables and accent marks in Spanish. And then we're going to learn how to conjugate AR verbs. So today is our first lesson. Well, actually, we did conjugate the verb say our last, our last unit, but this time we're going to conjugate a whole group of verbs. So it'll help a lot. Let's get started. OK, stressed syllables. So do you know what a stressed syllable is? Um, it's something that we have in English and in Spanish and as other languages as well. Um, basically, when we speak, one syllable in each word gets stressed. The stressed syllable is the one that we say more strongly than the other syllables. So for example, let's take the word encyclopedia. So how many syllables does that have? Encyclopedia, it has six syllables. And one of those syllables gets stressed when we speak. One of them gets said more strongly than the other. So how do we say encyclopedia? Do we say encyclopedia, 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 like which one sounds the most natural? Which one sounds correct? Which one is correct? And it's the fourth syllable, the P. So we say encyclopedia, not encyclopedia. That sounds weird. That's not the right word. It's encyclopedia. So the P E syllable gets stressed. And um, in English, the stressed syllable is basically arbitrary. Um, we just have to know which syllable to stress. You can't just look at the word if you've never heard it before and just um, know that, that the P in encyclopedia is stressed. Uh, you just have to know it and usually we know it just because we've heard someone else say it. Uh, so now look at the word, this word here. So which syllable is stressed? Well, it depends. Uh, if you say desert, you're talking about a dry, you know, place like the Sahara, that, then the first syllable is stressed, desert. But you can also say with the, the, the final syllable being stressed, desert. And in that case, we're talking about, you know, leaving your friends behind, deserting them. So it becomes a verb. So in that case, um, either syllable is stressed. Now in Spanish, this is never the case. The rules about which syllable is stressed are very strict in Spanish. And any word, any word that doesn't follow that rule requires an accent. Okay, the accent mark. So have you seen the accent mark in Spanish? Um, I use it a lot in my lessons. I just haven't talked about it before. It's just a little slash drawn over the top of a vowel in Spanish. So it starts at the low left-hand side and goes up, upward and to the right. So it looks like that. There you go. There's an accent mark. Uh, it, it, that's it. It's just a little slash. Other languages have different kinds of accents, like ones that start high and go downward or ones that are curved. But Spanish has only one kind of accent mark. And it's this one. And it can be drawn over any of the five traditional vowels in Spanish in either their capital or lowercase forms. So there's the accent mark can be over A, E, I, or U in its lowercase or capital. So there you go. That's an accent mark. Now, like I said, Spanish has uh, very strict rules about which syllable is accented. So you can, in Spanish, you can look at any word and you instantly know which syllable is stressed. So all we have to do is we have to ask ourselves one or two questions. So first let's look at a word and, and we have to ask ourselves, does the word have an accent mark? And if yes, if it does have an accent mark, then the syllable with the accent mark is stressed. Okay, that's simple enough. That's the whole point of the accent mark to tell us that it's stressed. But if it doesn't have an accent mark, we have to ask ourselves another question. We have to ask ourselves, is the last letter in the word one of the following letters? A E I O U S or N. So is it a traditional vowel, an S or an N? If it's one of those, then the second to last syllable is stressed. And I'll tell you that the vast majority of words in Spanish do end in a vowel S or N. So this is most words. The second to last syllable is stressed. And if it doesn't end in one of those letters, then the last syllable is stressed. So it's either if it has an accent mark, that's the syllable that gets stressed. If it doesn't, and the word ends in an A, E, I, O, U, S, or N, the second to last syllable is stressed. 
And if it doesn't end in one of those letters, if it ends in an R or an L or anything else, then the last syllable will get stressed. Okay, that's simple enough. Let's look, let's do let's do some practice. Okay, practice, so let's do it. I'm going to show you a word, and then you tell me uh, which syllable gets stressed. Okay, let's start with this one. Okay, I won't say the word because then I'll tell you who's stressed. So which syllable gets stressed? Do you know it? Well, it ends in a O. So the first of all, there's no accent mark, so we can't go by that. Uh, it ends in an O, so it ends in a vowel. So words that end in a vowel get the second without an accent mark have the second to last syllable stressed. So there you go. It's this, it's the middle one. Hermano it means brother. So uh, let's try another one. Okay, which syllable gets stressed? All right. Well, this one it doesn't end in a vowel, but it does end in an N or an S. It ends in an S, and there's so there's no accent mark, of course. So uh, if it ends in a vowel S or N the second to last syllable gets stretched. So again, the second to last one. Amigas, friends. All right. Okay, here's a different kind of one. What, what do you think? It, it doesn't have an accent mark. So we have to say, does it end in a vowel, an N or an S? No, it doesn't. It ends in a D. So in that case, the very last syllable gets stressed. Universidad. Universidad. So that means university, of course. All right, uh, oh, mogollon this is kind of just a slang word that uh, means a whole lot. Um, so which syllable gets stressed? Easy enough, it has an accent mark. So it's the last one, mogollon. So if that accent mark wasn't there, which syllable would get stressed? If it wasn't there, then it ends in an N. So it doesn't end in a vowel and in an S, so the second to last syllable would get stressed, so it would be mogollon. But that's why they have to put the accent mark, because this one has the, the last syllable stressed, so they uh, have to put the accent mark at the end, because an N, since it ends in an N, then that would make it, without an accent mark, it would be the second to last syllable. Uh, that, like, accent mark over an O and then N, that's a pretty common ending of words in Spanish. All right, what about this one? Hablar, it ends in an R, so that's not ending in a vowel n or s so the last syllable this one simple enough it has an accent mark rápido and if it didn't have that accent mark what would the syllable what stress syllable would get stressed the middle one would be rápido which isn't a word rápido that's the accent mark is over the a what about this one it ends in an r so it's the last syllable escritor all right, what about this one? So it means writer, and this is a girl writer, so we added an A. So now it does end in a vowel, so the second to last syllable gets stressed. So it's escritora. So you see the stress didn't, didn't change. Escritor, the last syllable, because it's an R. Escritora, the second to last syllable, because it ends in a vowel, which is the same one, tor. So there you go. I think that's pretty simple. It's just you know three simple cases. Accent mark, that one gets stressed. If it ends in a vowel, N or S, then the second to last syllable, if it ends in uh, any other consonant, or Y even if it is a vowel, then it's the last syllable. All right, and then a couple of things. There's two special uses that the accent mark you might see. So the first one is to specify that a word is a question word. So here I have, de donde eres, where are you from? It has an accent mark. El lugar donde vivo, the place where I live. So that's not, it means where, but it's not a question. So we don't have an accent mark. So we're going to talk about questions uh, in about three lessons. So we're going to learn a lot more about that. But just so you know, you might see an accent mark. You will see an accent mark over words that begin a question. And then the next one is to distinguish between certain common short words in Spanish. So here we have El se llama Carlos and El perro corre. So the dog runs. So the first one is he. his name is Carlos. So the L means he, and then the second one, el perro corre, then it means the. So those both L meaning he and L meaning the are both very common words in Spanish, he and the. So you put an accent mark over one of them in case it's the other one that means he, so that you know that those are different words. Okay, los verbos españoles, Spanish verbs. So now we know which syllable to stress. That's really important. We're going to need that to talk about whenever we talk about verbs. So now we know that, we can talk about uh, verbs. Now, do you remember um, what is the word for 
a verb that doesn't have a subject or a tense. In English, they begin with the word to, like to walk, to run, to sleep. Well, they're called infinitives. In English, they begin with the word to. And in Spanish, they end in either an AR, ER, or IR. So there's three kinds of verbs, and all verbs belong to one of these kinds. So their infinitive will either end in an AR, an ER, or an IR. So, like for example, AR verbs would be hablar, tomar, llamar, jugar. ER verbs would be things like comer, saber, haber, conocer. And then IR verbs would be verbs like vivir, preferir, pedir, y servir. So those endings determine what, how, we, how we conjugate the verb. You don't need to know what those words mean. Actually, I will teach you what all those words mean in the next couple of lessons. So those are just examples of AR, ER, and IR verbs that all Spanish verbs belong in one of those three categories. So parts of the verb. So in Spanish, there are, every verb has two parts. Well, basically every verb. It's uh, the stem, which is everything except for the AR, ER, and IR in the infinitive, and the ending, which is the last part, the AR, ER, IR in the infinitive. So those are the parts of a verb. And in a regular verb, when we conjugate, we change the ending, and the stem stays the same. So I so when I have hablar, it doesn't have a subject, it's just to speak. Now here I have I speak, and now I have it has a subject in a tense, the present tense. So it's yo hablo. The ending changed, the stem stayed the same. Okay, that's for regular verbs. There are some verbs in which they both change, and those are called irregular verbs. But in the regular verbs, the ending changes and the stem stays the same. Talk about conjugating regular AR verbs in the present tense. All right, so we're going to learn those endings. The stem is going to stay the same, and we're going to change the ending depending on the subject of the verb. So if the subject of the verb is first person singular, yo, if I want to say I, I speak, then we get rid of that AR and we put on an O. Just like you just saw that. Yo hablo. And now if it's a second person familiar, so to, then we replace the AR with an AS. All right. For third person or for second person formal, so for usted, L A N usted, we get rid of the AR and we replace it with an A. For nosotros, the we form, we get rid of the AR and we replace it with amos. So for the second person plural familiar, so this is vosotros, we replace that we replace the AR with ice. And notice there's an accent mark over that A. So uh, that's the vosotros form, it's only used in Spain. And now for the third person, or for the second person formal, the ustedes, then uh, we replace the AR with AN. So, those are all of the endings. You really, really, really need to know them off the top of your head. They need to be instantaneously you know them. O, as, a, amos, ais, an. Go ahead and just repeat that. O, as, a, amos, ais, an. Okay? You really have to know them. Let's use an example. We're going we're gonna to conjugate hablar, so to speak. So remember our two steps. We're going to drop the ending. So from hablar, we're going to get habl, and then we're going to add the correct ending. So let's try it. We're going to conjugate hablar in all of its forms, present tense forms. So the singular first person, I speak, I speak. Do you? It's. I know we just uh, we didn't have a lot of time to to look over those endings, but do you remember if I want to say I speak? Hablo. So we've gotten rid of the AR and we've replaced it with the correct ending, the O. Hablo. What about second person familiar, the to form? So we're going to get rid of the AR and we're going to replace that with, do you remember the ending for a second person familiar? It's as. So we have hablas. That means you speak. 
Okay, third person. So he or she speaks. Habla. Or usted also. Usted habla. El habla. He speaks. Ella habla. She speaks. Usted habla. You speak. So that's for the singulars. Now let's look at plural. So first person plural. We speak. Do you remember the ending for that? It was amos. Hablamos. Hablamos. The second person familiar plural, it's only used in Spain, the vosotros. So how do we uh, say that? Do you remember the ending for that? It was ice with an accent mark. Hablais. Vosotros hablais. You speak. And then the third person is plural, so they, they speak. Do you remember the ending? We got rid of the AR and we replaced it with an AN. Ellos hablan, ellas hablan, or the second person formal, ustedes hablan. So there you go. There's six forms of hablar for the present tense. And there they are. Hablo, hablas, habla, hablamos, hablais, hablan. Okay, repeat that. Hablo, hablas, habla, hablamos, hablais, hablan. Those endings are super important. You have to know them all just immediately off the top of your head. Say it to yourself, you know, practice, try different verbs once I teach them to you. So know all the endings. All right, so remember how we talked about stressed syllables? Well, now let's look at the stressed syllables as we conjugate a verb, because this is an important thing that a lot of people make an error on. So first, let's start with the infinitive, hablar. So which syllable gets stressed? Well, it ends in an R, so it doesn't end in a vowel in a an N or an S. So it, the last syllable is going to be stressed. Hablar. Not hablar. Hablar. It's the last syllable. But now we've conjugated it into the yo form. So it's hablo. So which, which uh, syllable gets stressed? Now it ends in a vowel. So the second, the last syllable gets stressed, which in this case is the first syllable. Hablo. So do you hear that change? Hablar. Hablo. It's not hablo. That's a completely different word in Spanish. Hablo. Now in the two form, hablas, you speak. Which one? So it ends in a vowel. It doesn't end in a vowel, but it does end in an S. So in that case, the second to last syllable gets stressed. We have hablas. So again, the stem gets stressed here. Hablo. Hablas. Again, habla ends in a vowel, so it's habla. Hablo, hablas, habla. So those are different. This, a different syllable gets stressed from the uh, from the um, infinitive. So now we have hablamos. It does it. In, it, it does end in an s, so it doesn't in a vowel s or n. However, hablamos, the nosotros form, we add two syllables. So everything else was just one. As we added as, but in nosotros we added amos. So the second to last syllable gets stressed. But look hablamos. It's different than, than the yo to and, and el ella. Yo hablo. The H, the A gets, gets stressed. Nosotros hablamos. The bla gets stressed. So here we've changed the, the stressed syllable. And likewise with hablais, we have an accent mark. So it's the last syllable. It's hablais. And now hablan. It ends in an N, so remember we had to ask ourselves if it ends in a vowel, N, or S. It does end in an N, so the second to last syllable gets stressed. A, ah, hablan. So do you notice that hablo, hablas, habla, and hablan all have the same syllable stressed, the first one, the one right before the ending. However, hablar, hablamos, and hablais all have the ending stressed. So that's a really important distinction because if you mess up those stressed syllables, you're changing the meaning of your words. So make sure you get that right. Hablo, hablas, habla, and hablan all have part of the stem stressed, the a. Ah. However, hablar, hablamos, and hablais have the endings stressed. 
All right, don't forget that. So it's just the infinitive, it isn't nosotros and vosotros. I'll have the ending stress. All right, here's some common regular AR verbs. So these verbs are all regular, they're all AR, and they're all used a lot. So let's just go through them really quick. Bailar is to dance. You might have heard ballerina. It kind of comes from that same um, from that same origin. Buscar to look for. Buscar. Cantar to sing. Cenar to have dinner. Comprar to buy. That's a really important one. It's used all the time. Contestar. To answer, desayunar, to have breakfast, descansar, to rest, dibujar, to draw, enseñar, to teach or to show, escuchar, to listen, Esperar, to wait or to hope. Estudiar, to study. Hablar, to speak. We've done that one already. Llegar, to arrive. Llevar, to take, to wear. Mirar, to look, to watch. Preguntar, to ask. Tomar, to take, and trabajar, to work. So there's 20 AR verbs, very common AR, word, AR verbs. So go ahead, you know, you should try to memorize those. Maybe if you are writing them down, it'd be a good idea. Make flashcards, something like that. Okay, let's practice our conjugation. So uh, here I'm going to give you what I want to say, and then I'm going to give you the infinitive in parentheses. So you're going to conjugate the infinitive into the correct form. So I buy, so I'm asking for the yo form. Do you remember what the ending is for that, for comprar? Compro. So make sure you get that stressed correctly, the first syllable gets stressed. Compro, or yo compro. It's You can say either one. The yo is optional. Subjects are optional in Spanish a lot of times. So yo compro, or compro. So you familiar, so we're talking about the two form. Dance, bailar. So how do you say that? You're taking by a lot. You're getting rid of the AR and you're replacing it with, do you remember the ending? As. Hablas. Hablas. You dance. That's actually as a complete sentence even. The one word is a complete sentence. Bailas. You dance. She calls. Yamar. So I don't think I gave you that one in the last page, but Yamar is another good one. Um, it means to call. And you might recognize it from like, me llamo, señor, hey, me llamo, whatever, te llamas. That, yeah, it means to call. You're saying, you're literally saying, I call myself, señor, hey. I call myself, me llamo, señor, hey. I call myself, señor, hey. So the word llamar is to call. And we already know it, actually, because we talked about calling ourselves by our names. So she calls. Ella llama. Ella llama. We need necesitar. I don't think I gave you that one either. Necesitar. We need. So it's kind of easy to remember because it's kind of like necessity. So necesitar. We're going to get rid of the ar and we're going to replace it with amos. Necesitamos. Necesitar. Necesitamos. You all familiar? So vosotros. Work. Trabajar. What would it be? Do you remember that ending for vosotros? It's ice. Trabajáis. Trabajar. Trabajáis. You work. You all work. Trabajáis. They have breakfast. So desayunar. We want the ellos form. So what are we going to say? Desayunan. Desayunan. Desayunar. To have breakfast, desayunan, they have breakfast. So the you formal, contestar, to answer. So what's usted, what? Remember how to conjugate that? 
conjugates just like el ella, so it's usted contesta. Usted contesta. The you are formal, so ustedes rest. Oh, I didn't put that there, but it's descansar is the verb. Descansar. Ustedes descansan. Ustedes descansan. He wears. Llevar. El lleva. El lleva. I ask. Again, I didn't put the verb there. Sorry about that. It's preguntar. So how am I going to put that into the yo form? Preguntar. We're going to drop the AR and we're going to add an O. Yo pregunto. Remember that, that yo is optional. It means the same thing. We study. Estudiar. Estudiamos. Last one, you all familiar, so it's vosotros again. Have dinner, so say not. Say nice. Say not to have dinner. Say nice. You all have dinner. Okay. That's it for today. Uh, the additional materials, you can click the link in the description. I don't have it up right this second, but I'll have it up really soon, so it's probably there by the time you're watching the video. And, and uh, you know, thanks for watching. Uh, go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't already. I hope to uh, hear back from you. And uh, hasta luego. Bye.